Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is your host with the most, Avery Yellar, 32 here. Destroy the ever living 10th place. Boo boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we show off a back to back top finish of 10th place. It was funny because I got a comment on my previous video where someone said, the word boo boo stain is because why is the reason why I'm leaving, and I'm like, well, don't let the grass touch your feet on the way out. <laughs> oh my god, you guys! I just woke up maybe 20 minutes ago. I was so tired, and I really wanted to get this deck profile done. Such a fun regional! It was so great going into this Kissimmee regional, not having to worry about getting an invite. I was just trying to shoot for a top eight. I caught up with a whole bunch of friends, saw two old buddies of mine from years ago that I hadn't seen in years. It was great catching up with them. Shout out to Leaf and Nathan. Shout out to the Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh! community. You know, I made a video uh, maybe about a week ago now talking about how I just felt so enfranchised with uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! community just because I've been around for so long and just being able to hang out with everybody and just have a great time. It, it, it was so refreshing. And again, maybe that just comes down to the fact I wasn't having to grind for... Uh, a nationals invite but it, it was just so much fun being able to hang out with everybody and just not have to care so much about the event itself and just try to get that top eight finish now we did finish seven wins two losses coming in 10th place unfortunately not getting that top eight finish but i do firmly believe i would have finished top eight but the problem was was that the last round there was so many draws the entire top eight was filled with people that had uh either one draw or two draws with maybe one loss. Like, it, it was really weird how it worked out. Top 32 finish, got their invites, 287 players. Uh, I'm going to go through my rounds here just real quick with what I played against. If you want, like, a full breakdown of my rounds, you can go on my community posts uh, on my channel. You go on the community tab, and I've got them all listed. Uh, round one, we finished in 20 minutes. We 2 0 branded. Uh, he kind of threw away both games because he super polyed me game one on the Pydra and the Chundra when he should have done Fadra and Chundra. He could have got the game back to his turn. Game two, all he did was set D barrier. He didn't set super poly, and I ended up winning. Um, round two, we beat Pure Snake Eyes, went to three games. Uh, round three, we won at table two in three games against Snake Eye Kashtira. That was a fantastic match. Uh, round four, I lost to the same dude that I shotgunned the Crimson Dragon against uh, down south at Prodigy Games when I played Centurion and he was on uh, Infernoble. I actually ended up finishing higher than him at this regional. I came in 10th. I think he came in like 11th or 12th, so I got my revenge in a roundabout way, but he, he destroyed me with uh, Melodious, uh, but really cool dude. Uh, round five, uh, I won in 15 minutes compared to 20. Uh, I played another person from locals. Shout out to my friend Victor. Uh, he bricked game one and two, so we just we got lucky. Um, round six, I actually beat you, Bell. I should have 2 owed him. Um, but I didn't use my Magnum up to attack his Dark Beckoning Beast. We'll be talking about that throughout the deck profile. Um, but we ended up going to three games. I ended up winning. Uh, round seven, I beat uh, Snake Eyes. Got uh, deck checked again. I got deck checked in game three. Had to go through like nine Imperms. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I got deck checked. Everything was fine. Uh, and then first time and my only time of the day, I dropped Trident Dragion. Like three or four judges were watching the game. It was awesome. Today was it, it was so cool. Uh, then round eight, I lost to Snake Eyes. Uh, the guy came in fifth. His name was Aaron Douglas, I think. Uh, and then round nine, the last round, we beat Snake Eyes in three games. We went to game three. I had all three dragons up. Slammed them all together into Transcend. He was at 1,900 life points. I swung for 3,000. We shook hands after the match. I put my glasses on the table. And I just leaned my head back, and I'm like... I am so tired. <laughs> Finishing us in 10th place. Uh, shout out to Andrew uh, from Jacksonville who came in second with Tempai. I don't know what his build was like. I don't know if he was on cash deer cards like we were. But all that aside, let's jump in to our 10th place finish deck profile. And yes, as the title says, we are on technically, I guess, Tempai cash tier. I just call it Tempai, but we are playing a cash tier engine that. Even one of the judges didn't know the combo line with Kashtira, and like the judges were shaking my hands, and like it, it was it was so cool. Like everyone was asking me this combo line. Even my round seven opponent was asking about the combo line. So I'll show that off, and we'll talk about it as we go through. Three copies of Pydra. It's your um, Stratos of the deck. Not much to really explain there. It's super good. Uh, three copies of Chundra. Several people actually had to read this card. Uh, th this card's crazy. It's start of the damage step. We're also on droplets, so even if like I go summon this, attempt to enter battle phase, and they imperm it. 
I can go attack at the start of the damage step, activates effect, chain droplet, send this, negate their monster. Then you can just go for Fadra since this resolves off board. Fadra gets Chundra, you've got two bodies, you can OTK. Droplets is incredible in this deck, especially when combined with Chundra and Lightning Storm. Next up, we got two copies of Fadra. Um, it's a monster reborn. It's really good. You don't need more than um, two. Also, I do want to shout out the uh, Tenpai Dragon Facebook page. Uh, shout out to Laffy Taffy in that group. He's always cooking up something crazy. Um, awesome players, awesome community in that group. Um, I got a lot of ideas for this deck list um, from that group. Uh, next up, for the Kashtira engine. This is what was throwing everybody off because they thought I was side decking into Kashtir, I guess. Um, three Fenrir, that is standard. However, we're also playing Rise Heart, and then you'll see that we're also playing uh, Pressured Planet. That is your whole Kashtira package. So just opening up Fenrir, you can OTK, and it helps you play through things like Deep Barrier, which I only got hit with once, uh, game two against the Branded Player round one. Um, but you can go like Fenrir or Raysaw to get you to Fenrir or uh, Rise Heart. You can summon the Rise Heart, make it level 7, go into Dracosac. Yes, Chirabini is a fire, which when the judge was asking me about the combo line, he didn't know that Chirabini was a fire. That's how you make the whole line. I'll be showing that combo at the end of the video. But um, just opening up Fenrir is an OTK because you played this package. Some One guy actually told me at the end of the tournament, he's like, I tried it, but I don't want to like dead open Rise Heart. You play Ancient Fairy. You slam two Tempies together to make Ancient Fairy. You special summon this off Ancient Fairy, make it level 7, and then you're off to the races. I really like this engine because sometimes this can uh, bait out like an Ash or something, and then you, they can't use it on your Sangin summoning or Kaiman. This can bait out like a Valor or Imperm, whatever, especially in game 1 when they don't know what you're on you just blind second it's a great way to get your thrust and talents live um came up i think one time at the regional where someone uh like negated one of my cash tier cards and i went okay talents show me your hand sorry about all the jump cuts i'm having a cough because i just woke up um but yeah i really like this engine like i said well i'll show off the combo uh, at the end of the video i kind of want to more get through the uh deck profile itself first um two copies of moonlit chill these are all of our hand traps here uh three ash blossom Three Valor, one Magnumut, um, and I might as well show these off here as well because story behind the Imperms. Jesus Christ, Imperm was the bane of my existence at this regional yesterday. So I had two Ultras and a Super. Uh, I got deck checked round three. Two of them were warped. The judge gave me a warning. My buddy let me borrow his collector's rares, which looked nice AF. He had to leave, so I had to buy the last three Fire King structure decks from the damn vendors to get three Imperms, and I had commons sitting here at my house the whole day. And I almost brought my commons, but I'm like, no, these Imperms aren't warped, they're fine. So I went through nine Imperms throughout the damn event. So frustrating, so aggravating, and that can really get in your head when like you're trying to you know, stay in the mindset, stay like locked in to all of your rounds, and then having shit come up with like deck checks or whatever, it can really kind of throw you off your game. No pun intended. Um, but the judge staff was great. I mean, they gave me a warning. It wasn't a big deal. It's just, it's really annoying to have to constantly like be wondering, okay, am I going to have imperms or not? So, but yeah, it was, it was just one of those things. I, I, I have learned to always come prepared and not just casually show up. Magnumut. This card's insane. Um, the one time that I actually used it was against the U-Bell player round, I think, six. Where, if you remember when I talked about it locals, the Yu-Gi-Oh choking in that video, pause, um, I talked about how, like, it seems like whenever I go to locals or something, I'm always choking on some play, like, forgetting to search off Magnumut. So, when I used Magnumut, uh, I had used Valor on one of his monsters. He chained Callby, and I'm like, wow, I didn't think this would come up. Chain Magnumut, banish my own Valor. So, it fizzles out his Callby, and it just makes him end his turn because he can't play through the Valor. And as soon as that resolved, he goes, do you activate? I'm like, yeah, activate Magnumut. And I write in all caps on my piece of paper, Magnumut. Then when I use it again in game two, I circled it. I was like, I'm not going to forget about this damn Magnumut. So, uh, yeah, th this card's absolutely insane. Only 12 hand traps. Um, I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, you got to be playing at least 15. Yeah, I'm definitely moving up to 15, maybe even 18. Anytime I saw one hand trap, I even questioned myself, like, do I even try and negate with, like, say, the one Moonlit Chill, one Valor, whatever that I have? Because if I try and negate, then that's one less card I can pitch off of Droplets. So I did see two hand traps a lot throughout the regional out of nine rounds. I'm not going to lie. I got super lucky when it came to that, seeing 
you know, at least two hand traps in, in hand. I think one time throughout the whole regional, I opened up with three and I almost cracked my pants because the odds of that mathematically are very low. I think if I had to guess, it's maybe like 20% or something, 20-ish percent. Um, I'm definitely moving this up to 15 to 18. Um, definitely going to probably cut the cash tier package as great as it is. Um, I know that a lot of people are playing shifter. You can't play shifter when playing the cash tier engine. Plus, I feel like uh, shifter is one of those cards that only is meant to help bad decks in the sense of Tempai is a good deck on its own. You don't necessarily need Shifter. Um, at the same time, Shifter is such a god card. Like if I end up going to YCS Indy, I'm going to play Shifters because in a big event like that, we're not talking regionals now. We're talking YCSs. You got to play blowout cards like Shifter just to auto win the ball game. Um, but I really did like this lineup. The Moonlit Chills um, were not terrible. Um, I would have liked to maybe play Nibs or something. Um, you know, looking back on it, because I hardly used anything in my side. Um, at the same time, you know, top decking a nib is just so bad. Whereas Moonlit Chill, if they try and make plays on your turn, then you can at least Moonlit Chill that monster during your own turn. So, really was happy with the um, hand trap lineup. Really don't think I would change anything. That's it for the monsters and some of the traps and spells. Let's move on to the god cards of the deck. Uh, three copies of Sang and Kaiman. This got ashed a couple times. Um, so I would usually try and do like Sang and Summoning first to bait out the ash. Go Sang and Kaiman to search. Um, card's absolutely insane. Doesn't really need any explanation. Uh, Sang and Summoning. One time today I pulled off the combo where you make Transcend Dragon in main phase one and then go to battle phase and have Sang and Kaiman. And I just, I won because of it. That was actually the match... Um, round seven against snake eye where i dropped out my ultimate rare trident dragon and like there were three judges and like 10 people watching it was it was delicious shout out also to my round seven opponent because he was so confused by the cash tier align with chirabini um yeah it was funny with how many times i played out like pressure planet and they just like look at the board and they tilt their head sideways and like it looks like their brain is having a 404 error uh and like i would do like race off first then i would play sang and summoning and they were just so confused Especially if they wasted like an ash or something on the race off. Like it was, it was really good. Um, next up, the one terraforming. Uh, this card's nuts. Uh, one thrust, one talents, along with one feather duster, uh, and then double lightning storm, and then the triple droplet. That's what's so interesting with Tempai, right? Is that you would think, oh, you need to be playing 15 to 18 hand traps. You don't want to mix droplets with hand traps, blah, blah, blah. But with this deck, you can kind of get away with that because you have so much non-engine space and you want cards to be doing different things to help you bust boards. Like maybe three or four times yesterday, I want to say that I activated Lightning Storm to clear back row and I would just chain droplet and send the Lightning Storm. Like in the last round, my opponent ended on Haida Mascarena with two face downs and the Divine Temple. I go draw, stay my main, activate Lightning Storm in the back row, ask for a response. No response. Chain Droplets, send a uh, Lightning Storm. Any response? None. Cool. Your Masquerade is negated. Blow away your back row. His two face downs were impermanent Twin Twisters. And I proceeded to win the ball game from there. I mean, it, it was just so good. The thrust came in the day before I left for the regional. Uh, actually, no, the day of that I left for the regional. It was on Friday, May 3rd. Um, this came up once, uh, round 8, against the Snake Eye player I lost to. I went this to search talents, but the one card that was in his hand was Ash. So I asked him after, like, man, I should have searched Terraforming. Was one card in your hand Ash? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, then it didn't really matter. Um, I love this lineup. Uh, no matter what version of Tempai you play, you've got to play Droplets. This card is multi-purpose. It's so good. We talked about the Chundra play and the damage step. Being able to Lightning Storm chain Droplets is so good. Getting, like, dead cards out of your hand is fantastic, whether it's dead hand traps or what have you. Droplets is a mainstay in this deck, and I'm so glad that I swapped to it instead of, like, other random Thrust targets. Thrust was not bad as well. You can keep it in going first or second because of the normal traps that I'm playing in the side deck. Um, so that's it for the main deck. For the extra deck, literally nothing but like four cards came up. The double Sangin Pie, the one Transcend, the one Trident Dragon on our beautiful ultimate rare that the listing says near mint. It's actually light play on the top. That's a little unfortunate, but it's almost 200 now. And we only paid 82 because we got in early. These were the only cards that came up in the whole extra deck. I kid you not. Well, okay. The Black Rose came up one time. We. Like, against the U-Bell matchup. And with the Black Rose, holy balls, I played out of my fucking mind on that match. So, he's got, uh, what was it? The Spirit of U-Bell on the board. Um, this was in game one when I, I used Chundra to attack the Dark Beckoning Beast. And I should have used Magnuma to attack it. I would have had game on board. Um, but he has that up. I do my th at least three attacks to get that done. I make Sangin Pai. I revive a monster. I make uh, Transcend, 
Then I have two extra bodies with Chandra and like I think a Fadra. I make Black Rose. I nuke the board. He activates the effect of Spirited Ubel to summon regular Ubel. I activate Transcend to summon it back to pop the Ubel. He doesn't get the effect and he has a clear board. I use Sangenpai to bring it back and I swing for 56. Had I used the Magnemut to attack into a zero attack Dark Beckoning Beast, then I win there in a swift 2-0 in like 20 minutes because that's 56 plus the 25 from the uh, Magnemut. So that would have been, what is that, 81, 66, 76? Yeah, 81 if I can do math early this morning. So, I, like, your boy hit like five black flashes and we just, we popped off. Um, yeah, like it was, it was really delicious. Now for the rest of the crap that didn't come up. Uh, one Ancient Fairy, you play this in case you open up uh, Rise Heart. Because like I said, you can summon this out, pop, say like Pressure Planet or Sang and Summoning, gain a thousand if you somehow go to time. Um, you know, search another field spell, use this to summon Rise Heart, Rise Heart, Banish a top three, make it level seven, you go into Draco Sack. Um, one Disc Pattern, this came up once. Um, I actually felt like I was super smart for this because I went um, summon Rise Heart, Banish the top three after making the Disc Pattern. So I went main base two, special summon Rise Heart since I had Fenrir. Banish uh, Fenrir, Banish the top three. Now my Disc Pattern was live as a monster negate. Um, and I ended up winning that game because of it. Um, so it only came up once. I'm, I'm actually really tempted to sell it because I spent like almost $40 on it. Uh, one Draco Sack for the Cherry Beanie line. One Striker Dragon, it never came up. Uh, one Little Knight, also never came up. Uh, one Haida because we're in a fire format. One Cherubini. Um, I'm an idiot. This is a dark, um, but Promethean doesn't require uh, a fire. It just requires effect monsters, so I just I can't read cards. Um, just kidding. This isn't a fire. This is a dark. Promethean does not require fires. It requires effect monsters, So, but it's for that line. Uh, and then we're playing the one Promethean Princess, the Raging Phoenix, and the Zelantis. I made Promethean a couple of times. Um, I never got to the uh, Zelantis line. Uh, I think I made Raging Phoenix like once. This whole combo, like, I think never really came up. Like, I would get to Promethean because then you can bring back Pydra and then get Sangin Summoning or the Kaiman and go from there. Um, but yeah, so, wow, I actually told that judge the wrong information. It's not a fire, it's a dart, but Promethean only requires effect monsters. Well, you live and you learn, folks. Um, then for the card, the only cards that came up in my side. Uh, three Heat Wave, Gozen, and Rivalry. These are the only cards that ever came up. Um, so my game plan going into this regional was win or lose game one, you side deck to go first. Because if you win game one, the opponent may say you go first. And then you top deck Heat Wave and you play it and they crap their pants. Um, if you lose game one, you opt to go first game two because the opponent's most likely going to side deck to go first in game two. And then if you open up Heat Wave or Floodgates, whatever, you just win. Uh, and then once you win game two, if you went down that line, then you just side out and opt to go second game three. Because the opponent is not going to be like, okay, yes, I'm going to let the Tenpai player go first in game three. Because you might get hit with that again and lose. So no one's going to pass up the chance to want to go first. Unless they're on the same 4D chess play that I'm on, which nobody was on. Uh, which was funny. I won most of my die rolls at the regional. I think I only lost like two or three die rolls, if that. And of course, it's when I'm playing a blind going second deck that every time I win the die roll, I say, you go first. And they're like, oh yeah, you're on Tempi. And I'm like, fuck. So yeah, these are only five cards that came up. Um, three Cosmic. Never came up. Um, yeah, let's talk about the goo. I mentioned this in a community post with Trap Trick. This was my trap trick lineup. Shout out to Jeremy Mitchell for this. Um, because I was actually looking back at his catch Tira deck profile, and that's where I got inspiration from this. Um, I wanted to cut Deep Barrier and Anti-Spell to play two other cards, but I'm like, Jeremy only played four targets, so we're good. Um, double Threatening Roar, Triple Deep Barrier with a trap trick. I'm playing 17 cards on my side instead of 15, but I'm doing it legally. <laughs> so the play was that if I went into a mirror match, which I never did, um, then if I won or lost game one, I would side deck in basically everything where you bring in the D-Bears, the Threatening Roars, and the Trap Tricks, plus the uh, three Heat Wave. If you won game one, then the uh, Tenpai player is most likely going to make you go first, and then you can have all this and just be ready to go. This stuff never came up, one, because like I said, I didn't have a mirror, and then two, because it wasn't really good against any of the Snake Eye decks or anything I played. I didn't play any Voiceless Voice. I only played one Melodious that I wasn't super sure how to tackle. Um, I figured it would be a deck I played, but I mean, other than that one, I was just kind of like, well, I asked him how to beat it after the match. He's like, yeah, just negate the Ostinato, negate the Fusion on Summon or something, and you're fine. I'm like, okay, cool. And then it never came up. But I really like this package. I think moving into Infinite Forbidden with that Sangin Kaiho, since it's a normal trap, you can trap trick or trap track into that. 
Um, I'm really interested to mess around with that. I may even cut the terraformings for that since it just skips the main phase. I don't think you can transaction rollback into it. Um, if you can, I think it's kind of pointless because you have to have at least one fire dragon on the field. Um, and then one anti-spell, it never came up, um, but it was there as another floodgate. So real quick, let's show off um, what the uh, cash Tira combo is. So of course you're gonna start off with special summoning Fenrir. You're gonna activate its effect to go for our lovely Rise Heart. You are going to normal summon Rise Heart here. You're not gonna use its effect to special summon or else you're locked into exceeds. You get locked in if you use its own effect to special summon itself. You're gonna activate its effect to banish uh, another Fenrir from your deck. That's gonna make the opponent banish the top three cards. You've got two level seven bodies on the board. You're going to overlay here into Dracosac. You're going to activate Dracosac's effect, detaching whatever. It doesn't matter. You're going to make two tokens that are level three. You're going to slam the two tokens together into Cherubini. This is what's key. Cherubini dumps for cost. So if you Valor, Imperm, uh, whatever on it, I don't care <laughs> because I'm getting my dump for cost. Like, if you Ogre it, then yeah, it sucks. I have to create another body on the board in order to make Promethean. Actually, I'd have to create two more bodies. Um, because my dumb self is thinking that Cherubini is a fire, but Promethean doesn't need a fire, it's just effect monsters. We're going to dump Pydra, okay? So two and one, that makes three, because I can actually do math today. We're going to slam those. You make Promethean. Promethean's effect, non-targeting, summon a fire back. You summon Pydra. Pydra's effect activates. You go for either Sangin summoning or Kaiman. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on the game state. But let's just say for argument's sake, you go for uh, Sangin Kaiman. And from here, you can either OTK just with this. Um, or, like, let's say the opponent has a monster on the field. Then you can just do the Zalantis line and OTK. You're going to activate Sangin Kaiman to search for Chandra. Because remember, you're locked into fires. Chandra's a fire. That's fine. Activate Chandra. Summon. You're going to send the Pydra and Promethean to make... Raging Phoenix, and then Raging Phoenix into Zalantis. Zalantis, clear the board, summon both back, summon the special summon the opponent's monster face down defense. You have a fire on the field, you know what that means. We're going to go Promethean and Raging. <laughs> Promethean's effect is going to pop your Chandra to pop their monster to summon. You're going to obviously co link it with the Zalantis. You're going to activate Raging Phoenix targeting the uh, Chandra to summon that. So now this is gained 1500. You go to battle phase. Uh, this can use effect to pop two cards because it's co-linked and you're swinging with over 8,000 damage This combo never came up, but not many people knew about it Like only I think two of my opponents actually knew about the line and negated my rise heart um, But some people would like waste a hand trap on the pressure planet would be confused and then I would just combo off with tempi cards um, And like I said, you could stop off at just the sang and kaiman and still otk because you're locked into fires by this and everything You have is fire. So you're not locked out of transcend or anything <laughs> So that's the deck profile. I absolutely love how I performed. was really hoping to get that top eight. If there weren't so many draws, I think I would have gotten top eight instead of 10th place. Absolutely loved how this deck performed. Um, any changes that I would make to it in the future? Um, I think I'm definitely going to be cutting back the cash cards and play testing the stuff out of Infinite Forbidden since I do feel like I'm going to Nationals. I don't know yet if I'm going to YCS Indy. Um, if I do, then I mean I do. Um, but I absolutely love how this deck performed. Um, people had to read my cards and I got to drop Trident Drag on one time. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you to everybody supporting me and cheering me on and I will see you in the next video.